Hi beautiful people, how are you all doing today? My name is Mark and I love making things sweet and in style. If you are new to my channel, please don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. And this is where I do anything and everything creative. So for today, I'll be sharing with you the long, long time requested video of one of my very loyal subscriber. Hello there, Larry. How are you doing? So this is your long time requested video on fondant. So what I'm going to share with you is a very easy fondant that you can use in decorating your cakes. So there's a lot of different types of fondant. So we'll go through that on our journey together in cake decorating. So there are like marshmallow fondant. There is um, milk fondant, which is made out of milk. It's also called pastillas fondant. So I'll be sharing you those in a few days that's going to come. So for today, I'll be sharing with you a very easy fondant that you can make with very very easy to find ingredients and actually did you know that this fondant can actually last for one to two years if you made it for a dummy cake okay and then um you can also use this to make flowers the only difference is it's not going to be that hard same as the gum paste recipe okay and then the good thing is once you made this fondant it does not require any resting at all so once you make it you can already use it to cover your cakes. So what are you waiting for? Let's start. Okay, so right now I'll be sharing with you one of my fondant recipes. So this is a rolled fondant because I actually use other different kinds of fondant depending on the weather. Okay, so I'll be sharing with you my rolled fondant because this is one of the easiest and um, easiest to source Okay, in terms of materials because it has very limited materials that can be bought actually almost anywhere okay so for the materials or ingredients that you need basically you first need confectioner sugar so this is five cups of sifted confectioner sugar okay so this is around 600 grams and then what i have here is glucose so i have here one fourth cup of glucose this is 77.5 to 80 grams okay you have to put it on a microwavable container because we'll be using a microwave. But if you don't have a microwave, you can also use a double broiler method. Okay, and then what I have here is a microwavable container. So this is Pyrex. So you need to add one fourth cup of cold water. Okay. Okay, so I added one fourth cup of cold water and then what I have here is gelatin okay so we need to add in one tablespoon of gelatin okay so I just need to sprinkle that around just like so and then sometimes uh, not all the gelatin will be incorporated to the cold water so what you need to do is to get a stick or a juice, juice stirrer okay and then just mix everything together and we set this aside to bloom okay we have to wait for that to bloom and then we'll be working with our dry ingredients so for the dry ingredients this is confectioner sugar and then we'll be adding tylose powder so the tylose powder is one half tablespoon to one tablespoon okay um because it depends on how hard or how soft you want your fondant to be but for today we'll be using one tablespoon of tylose powder if you don't have tylose powder you can also use cmc powder this is a gum a gum powder okay so after that you need to mix it with your whisk okay to fully distribute the gum powder which is tylose okay just like that okay so once everything is well mixed you need to create a uh, a well on the center okay just like that see that and then you will see here that this is already bloomed our gelatin you see that so it's already thick and it's not moving so we have to pop this inside the microwave or put this in a microwave for about 30 to 45 seconds until it's fully melted same with our glucose okay and then after that we'll mix the two together if you don't have microwave you can do this on a double broiler method okay Okay, so right now we already had our gelatin melted. You see that it's very clear 
and also our glucose is heated up so we have to mix the two together be careful because this is really hot okay so after that you need to stir it with a stick so what i'm using here is an ordinary juice stirrer okay that you can buy in local supermarkets you have to mix the two together okay so if you're using a double broiler method so you just do the same you melt the two together uh, or separately and then you need to mix them together okay the reason why we heated up the glucose because you will not be able to mix in the two ingredients if the glucose is not heated okay so you see that it's well mixed so you have to continue stirring and mixing until it cools down a little bit okay because if it's too hot it's going to melt all the confectioner sugar okay so you have to cool this down a little bit so as you see i'm just stirring continuously just to bring the heat a little low okay so this is okay it's no longer that hot so i'll be pouring this on the center where we created a well or a hole okay so make sure you get all those glucose and gelatin mix okay you have to maximize it okay so after that i'm going to stir using a rubber spatula or if you have a wooden spoon you can use that also i'll be stirring from the center okay see that so if you have seen my gum paste recipe so i'll put the description box below the link um, it's a little bit similar. The only difference is the amount of glucose is way too much. That's what will make it more stretchy and more pliable, okay? So as you see here, I'm gently incorporating from the center. And then once it's well mixed, I'll get from the sides, okay? And then I'll mix again. You have to do this step by step, okay? Because if you just mix everything else together... It's not going to come up really, really nice, okay? You can also do this on a stand mixer if you have a stand mixer. But what I'm showing you now is the manual method, okay? If you're using the stand mixer, you have to use a dough hook. And then once you see that the paste is starting to form, you have to stop, of course, to protect your machine also. <laughs> okay, just like that, okay? I'll get from the sides and then I'll mix. Did you know that this paste you can also use, or I mean, I, I mean this fondant, okay? You can also use this to make flowers, okay? The only difference is it does not dry as hard as gum paste. So if you're worried about flowers that are going to break, if you're on a travel, so you can actually use this fondant to make flowers, okay? So it will come to a point wherein it's really hard to mix just like that. You see that? It's starting to fight and it's giving me a lot of muscles. Okay. So when you're at this point, what you need to do, you need to change the course of things. Okay. You need to tilt your bowl and then gently we will fold. Okay. Tilt, fold, okay, fold that until you mix everything else and then of course there will come a time wherein it's gonna be super hard to fold so that's an indication that you have to take it out and start kneading okay especially for this one we use one tablespoon of tylos if you don't want it to be as hard as this you can actually reduce it to one half tablespoon okay but i like my fondant harder because you know i'm a man and i have i need to have muscles so yeah okay so you see that it's a little bit hard to fold so i have to take this out and start kneading so before you knead what you need to do is to make sure that the area is super clean okay there's no dirt there's no pigments and then your hand should be really clean also, okay? There's no color, there's no pigment. So 
So what I'll do now, I'll use my spatula or if you have a scraper or a wooden spoon to actually hold on to the paste just like that and tap out all the excess sugar. Okay. Because we'll start kneading. And then what you want to do is actually put the paste on top of the sugar. The reason why I do it like this so that the paste won't stick to your working space or the table, okay? And then of course, you need to take out all those sugar because of course, you want things to be sweet, okay? So you have to maximize your ingredients. Make sure nothing is going to waste, okay? And then after that, you need to coat your hands with shortening. So for the shortening, you need to use vegetable shortening. For the brand, I'm using Puratos, but you can also use Crisco or any other brands available at your market. Okay, so just a tiny amount. Put on your hands, just like that, and then gently spread, okay? Just like lotion. And then start pressing, okay? And incorporating all the sugar onto your fondant dough, okay? The reason why we added some shortening so that it will actually make the fondant moist and also it will help for the fondant not to stick on your hands, okay? So right here, we just continue kneading and kneading. So you're, you'll start to see that this is becoming more pliable. With regards to the storage, this needs to be stored in an airtight container, okay? So usually I wrap it with cling wrap and then I put it on a Ziploc bag and then I put it on the fridge or the chiller and then this will last for about three to four months, okay? So just spread some. Okay, so... You have to continue kneading this until all the sugar is combined, okay? To get this all, so just put it just inside like that and then you fold and you knead. To knead this all. To fully incorporate everything. So, I also have another recipe of fondant. I actually have four. So, what I'm sharing you now is the first because this is actually one of the basic. This is a rolled fondant. But I also have a marshmallow fondant. I also have a pastillas fondant. Pastillas fondant is made from milk. So, that is the kind of fondant that you want to use if it's super humid or rainy. Okay? Because it does not melt. So I'll be sharing it with you guys as we go on with this cake decorating journey. Okay? So yeah, I'm just mixing all the confectioner sugar. So this is a little bit harder because I like my fondant this way because the pylos that we actually placed is one tablespoon. But if you want it to be a little bit softer, you have to change that into one half tablespoon, okay? The reason why it's a need to have tylos because it actually helps the paste to be binded together aside from the glucose. Okay. We are getting closer. So if you don't want to do it manually, again, you can use a stand mixer. If you have a spiral mixer, the one that is used for breads, let's say you want to double batches, you can definitely use that. Okay. But I like it this way. So, you have to get So you'll see that this is already very, very stretchy. You see that? It's a very, very nice fondant. 
can use to cover your cakes with. So I'll just add some more shortening on my hands. Okay, and knead it lastly before we store on our Ziploc. So normally what I do, I get all the sugar so that the, the sugar is maximized and the, ta the table is clean, okay? <laughs> See that? Okay, so we're done with our fondant. So I'm just gonna give it last one coat of shortening just to moisturize and soften everything up before I store it. Sometimes what I do, I actually add some shortening here, okay, on your working space and then this is where you need. Okay, so there you have it. This is your easy rolled fondant. You see that? Super duper stretchy and super nice. Of using this when I'm uh, making figures for my cake. You see that? It's super stretchy. Okay, so I hope you learned a lot. Again, to store this. Okay, I'll be showing you how to store this in a bit. Okay, so this time I'm going to show you how I store my rolled fondant, okay? So basically, you just need a layer of cling wrap, okay? So you get cling wrap just like that. Oops, and then you take your fondant. I actually forgot to mention, you can also use flavoring for this one. So again, if you're using liquid flavoring or let's say um, an oil-based flavoring, you can add it on the wet ingredients once we are done heating them but if you're using powder flavoring you need to mix it with your confectioner sugar okay make sure that it's really sealed just like so and then cut okay and then this is what you'll have so for the storage life this should be stored inside the chiller or the fridge it lasts for about three to four months okay and then if you will use it you need to let it thaw for about 30 minutes to 1 hour on room temperature before you use it because if you take it out straight from the fridge, it's gonna be really, really hard, okay? If you're in a hurry, you can use a microwave so you can pop it inside the microwave for about 5 to 8 seconds and then knead with shortening on your hands, okay? So there you have it. That's how you make a very easy rolled fondant. Perfect for figures, for wrapping your cakes, and of course, making cool designs okay thank you bye